Hello and welcome to this first screencast on using Scratch version 2. Scratch 2 can be either installed on your computer as a normal program or accessed as a web app. So going into my web browser, I type in the Scratch address and I'm immediately taken to the Scratch opening page. There's lots to explore here, but straight away I'm going to click on Create, which takes me to the Scratch program editor and I'm going to go full screen on my web browser, so it looks just like an installed application. A Scratch program is made up of sprites or characters that perform on a stage. We can immediately see that the screen is split into four main areas. On the top left, we have the stage, which is where all the action happens in our program. Below the stage, we have the sprites and stage area. This is where we can add sprites either by choosing one from the library. I can paint a new sprite and this opens up Scratch's graphics editor which we'll look at later. I can upload a sprite from an existing file or I can take a picture from a camera such as a webcam and use that as a sprite. But I'm going to get rid of this one I created either by right clicking and choosing delete or using the scissors tool and deleting. Clicking back on the scripts tab I can see that on the right hand side of my screen I have my scripts area. A script is a set of instructions for a sprite and these instructions are made by dragging out code blocks. There are 10 categories of code blocks to do with motion, to do with how a sprite looks or the sounds it can make. A sprite can leave a trail as it moves using a virtual pen and we can use this feature to create some computer graphics which we'll look at in a later lesson. To do with variables, which we'll talk about later, sprites can react to events, things that happen on the computer. We also have blocks which control what a sprite can do, to sense when different things are happening, to work with numbers or text, and finally Scratch 2 has the ability to create our own blocks. And if you're using the web version of Scratch 2, you'll notice that there's a feature called Backpack down at the bottom of the screen. Backpack gives us an easy way to store and transfer sprites and media between projects. As well as scripts, a sprite can have a costume, which is, if you like, a different outfit for a sprite. And it can be made to look entirely different. We can see here two different costumes for the cat. But I could just as easily select a new costume for this sprite, which makes the cat look like a dog. So it's important to see that a costume is just one of the outfits for a sprite. And similarly, a sprite can have several sounds. This one makes the cat meow, but I could also bring in a new sound. and make the cat bark. <coughs> Lastly, if we look at the stage area and move the mouse around, we can see that the coordinates change. The center of the stage is X and Y zero, with the X axis going all the way to 240 on the right and negative 240 on the left, with the Y axis going up to 180 at the top and negative 180 at the bottom. Well, a Scratch project is made up of sprites that perform on a stage, so let's make this sprite perform. So clicking on the Scripts tab at the top of the screen, I'm going to drag a Move 10 Steps block into the Scripts area. And if I double-click on that block, the cat moves 10 steps on the stage. Well, that's not very exciting, so let's make use of the costumes the cat has and go to Looks and drag a next costume block below the Move 10 Steps block. So as soon as the cat's move 10 steps, it will go to the next costume and look like it's walking. Now it would be better if we didn't have to keep double clicking on that stack. So let's go to Control and bring out a Forever block. And I'm going to wrap the Forever block around the existing blocks. So now when I double click, the computer cycles or loops round the move 10 steps and next costume blocks 
until the cat gets to the edge of the stage. So I'm going to stop that and drag the cat back to the center. And I'm going to add a new block, which says that if the cat gets to the edge of the screen, bounce off it. So let's try that. Well, it's working, but I don't think I want the cat to go on its head. So I'm just going to stop that just now. And I'm going to get information on the sprite. And I have three options for rotation here. I have this Can Rotate option. I can limit the cat to moving left and right. Or I can stop it from rotating at all. I think the one I want is just move left and right. So let's try that. Well, I think my cat's going too fast there, so I'm going to add a weight block. Immediately after the cat has moved 10 steps. Hmm, too slow. So I'm going to change that to weight for 0.1 seconds. And that's better. Lastly, to avoid having to double click on my blocks every time I want to carry them out, I'm going to bring out an event block. And this says that when the green flag is clicked, carry out these blocks. I could reduce the weight even further or get rid of it altogether. Ah, but of course what happens here but that removes the weight and the blocks below it. So I'm going to pop those back into the script. And to get rid of any block, just drag it back into the blocks area. I'm now going to save this as catwalk. And the last thing I want to do is to bring a new backdrop onto the stage. So clicking on Choose Backdrop from Library, I think I'll choose this desert scene. So I'll just drag the cat down there and run my program. And there we are. Feel free to experiment. Try adding some looks or sound blocks, for example. Have fun.